Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Wednesday, December 7th, 2016. At this time, would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the minutes of the executive session of November 2nd, 2016 be approved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda, uh, approval of the warrants. Mr. Chairman, I move that the following warrants be approved. 23A-17 in the amount of $78,237.36 payroll. Warrant 23B-17 in the amount of $128,506.77. And warrant 23C-17 in the amount of $200. Uh, the last two being uh, accounts payable, all dated December 7th, to be approved. Second, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Correspondence. We have a piece of correspondence tonight from the Dighton Historical Society regarding the benches that were recently donated to them from the old town hall. This little um, memo was addressed to the Board of Selectmen. We wish to extend our thanks and appreciation for the benches from the old town hall that you recently donated to us. We look forward to using them when we open up our, our schoolhouse. Sincerely, Chris Pacheco, President of the Dighton Historical Society. And with that, you're very welcome. We found a good home. That's right. Uh, announcements. Uh, we'll start off because we have a gentleman that would like to say a few words here, our Veterans Officer Don Hershey, on the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mr. Hershey. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the selectmen for inviting me here today. My name is Donald Hershey. I'm the Veterans Agent for Towns of Dighton and Berkeley. And as we know, today is the 75th anniversary of the attack at Pearl Harbor, which brought us into the Pacific phase of World War II. Um, 2,400 Americans lost their lives on that day. It was a tragic day, but if you look back at the battles, you'll see that most of those ships were refloated and put back into service. At that time, our Navy was very limited, and we needed everything we could get. And through the resolve of the people that worked there, the Navy, the Marines, and the Army, they had those ships, some of them, back online fairly soon. The Japanese made a couple of fateful errors. One was that when they attacked, we had three aircraft carriers northeast of Hawaii, and they were coming in from northwest, so they didn't see them. And those three carriers escaped destruction. Six months later, they were vital to the attack at Midway Island, which we won, and it was another turning point in the war for us. The other fateful error they made was that they underestimated the resolve of the American people. That war, everyone came together. Everybody who was in uniform, they could walk, joined up. We had 16-year-old boys quitting high school, lying about their age to enlist and go in the Navy, or the Marines, or the Army. And everybody that stayed home worked for the war effort. We call it uh, recycling now, but then it was scrap drives, all metal was saved, paper, everything was used for the war effort. Since that time, we haven't had a time where we have been united as the way we were then. But the way the world is going, 
at some point in the future, we may be called upon again to be a world leader. And then they will call us the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Don. I will continue on with the announcements for tonight. Trash bags, shops, disposal containers, and recycling stickers are all for sale at the Board of Selectmen's office. Call 508-669-6431 for more information. If you need fuel assistance this winter, call Citizens for Citizens at 1 Taunton Green, Taunton, 508-823-6346. Again, I'll repeat that number, 508-823-6346. There is a winter parking ban in effect from November 1st through April 1st of each year. No parking is allowed on any street during this time. Landfill stickers are available for 2017. They are available at the transfer station during regular hours on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Payment is by check only, made payable to the town of Dighton for the amount of $15, and that's a yearly fee. Registration is required, and stickers are not transferable. For you, the people that were with us last week, we had uh, a couple individuals <coughs> at our meeting from Comcast who, um, I put, a, I put out an um, open invitation to people who may be having problems with their Infinity <coughs> and Comcast service uh, to the point of if any resident or business in town is having trouble with their Comcast service, please contact the gentleman that was here, Mr. Robert Sullivan, at robertsullivan at comcast.com or call 781 688 8171 and the two individuals that I am in the middle of right now can contest to the satisfaction of making a call to this uh, Mr. Robert Sullivan because they both had issues in the past week and I believe they were resolved. Yes and also uh, Ms. Spencer was in the audience that day and had expressed some concerns and uh, they worked with her as well and Mr. Mm -hmm. Marvel as well as I understand so. So again, I'm going to repeat this. The gentleman's name is Robert Sullivan. His email address, robertsullivan at comcast.com or call 781-688-8171. And Nancy, I think, had a major overhaul. I saw that. But she's very happy now. Got a nice up. Uh, no, not an upgrade, but they replaced an outside cable. They brought they brought in a new modem, um, and they they um, let me say they finished a job that was done a couple of years ago when cable I had a cable hookup put in the kitchen, but the wires were not attached properly to the house or the inside, so I had wires flapping in the breeze. But this gentleman did a very good job. The Veterans Office is looking for volunteers to drive the brand new veterans van and to bring the veterans to appointments. If you're interested, please contact Don Hershey, Veterans Agent, at 508-669-5027, option two, if you are interested in volunteering. On Saturday, which is this coming, December 10th, 2016, the Police Officers Union, Local 306, will be holding a Fill the Cruiser event in the parking lot of the Old Town Hall, or what we've been known as Grange Hall. The goal is to fill this cruiser full of toys to be distributed to local children who may not have the opportunity to get much at Christmas. Uh, this will be held between, I believe it's nine and two. Nine and two. So that cruise will be parked way out in front of the old town hall, Grange Hall. Uh, if you have something you'd like to uh, put, they ask that it's an unwrapped uh, present. Um, there's reasons for that why they don't want wrapped presents. Uh, you can't see what's in it. There's too many kooks out there. Um, 
So we ask that, you know, this is their first attempt at this little um, event, and uh, most of the events they put on are very successful, and you know, we wish them a lot of luck. Absentee ballots are now available at the town clerk's office for the upcoming January 10th special election concerning the new police station that was approved at the recent special town meeting. Town census will be mailed next week by the town clerk's office. Please complete and return them as soon as possible. Nomination papers for the April town election will be available beginning January 3rd, 2017. And when I finish these, I'll read the vacancies that, that will be uh, open for people to take out nomination papers for. The Dayton Public Library will be holding their annual cookie swap next week, and Santa will be visiting the library on December 18th. There will be no delay in trash or recycling pickup during the week of Christmas and New Year's Day. We try to get this out because of the way town hall is set up, our uh, union employees' uh, holiday becomes Monday. But that is not going to affect trash pickup in town just because town hall is closed. We don't pick it up. So. <coughs> well, the food bank distribution will take place on December 17. 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as usual in the lower level of town hall. Now for those who may be anxious or ambitious and looking to perhaps get involved with, with politics within the town, the following is a list of uh, officials whose term will be expiring uh, 2017. Board of Assessors, uh, expiration of Pamela J. Walla. It will be up for grabs for a term of three years. The Board of Selectmen, for a term of three years, being vacated by none other but then myself. The uh, School District com uh, Committee, there will be two openings, each for three years, being vacated by Eliza Kucha and Janice Terry. Be a, an opening for a housing authority for a term of five years, being vacated by Jeffrey Alley. Parks and Recreation will have one vacancy for three years, uh, vacated by Heidi Swist. The Planning Board will have one opening for a term of five years, being vacated by Joseph Figueroa. Public, public Library Trustees for a term of three years, vacated by Ronald O'Connor. And Town Moderator for a term of one year will be vacated by William McKeon, Jr. And I don't understand this, the Sewer Commissioners. It is an unexpired term, but that, that the person moved out of town. Oh, okay. All right. So there will be a th three year? Three year term. On the ballot. For one seat on the sewer commission. So, if anybody's interested, and in, um, as was written in the announcements, you can pick up nominations and papers starting January 3rd, and you have until February 16th, which will be the last day to pick up nomination papers. So join in the fun and the politics and take out your papers. Uh, next on the agenda, old business. First on the agenda, review, discuss, and act on a list of teachers and students involved in the work on the holiday train. And I ask my fellow colleague, Mrs. Gulak, Please present all these. Uh, I got the names of the teachers involved and the students that uh, oh, this was attached to that, so that's coming up. Um, the teachers that were involved 
when the, with the project to Holiday Train. Somewhere along the way, uh, Christopher Garcia in metal fabrication, Brian Cavallo, graphic arts. Brian Cavallo was one of the teachers involved with printing the 300th anniversary book. So we recruited him back into service. Dana Bullock, design and visual communications. Al Libby, collision tech. Scott Lind, collision tech. John Parrish, collision tech. Uh, I want to mention on uh, Channel 9 and also on the YouTube page, there is a uh, DVD that was put together by Ron Smith. It's about 22 minutes long. It's the uh, story of Tuffy the train that's parked out front, the BP train. And it was Al Libby who sent the photographs that were taken at BP during the, when it arrived as a, uh, well, a naked military vehicle <laughs> and as it left as a completed train. And um, there's some pictures uh, of the old train that I gave to Ron, and Ron also came down and filmed part of the lights on. So anyhow, when you get a chance, it'll be on Channel 9, but also you can go to YouTube, because Brett posted it there. But Ron Smith did a great job, so if you're watching, Ron, thank you very much. Uh, I think everybody's going to enjoy it. It's something that we can run each year, but uh, it's the uh, recruitment of, of Tuffy from its military Korea to being Dighton's holiday train. Now, the, the students who were involved, these were the names that I read at the uh, lights on, but I want to mention them again. Uh, I want to mention uh, Jim Aldopoulos. He's the gentleman that if you have a project that you would like to submit, you contact Jim. And so uh, I met him when we were uh, asking about them printing our book, and he's also the gentleman that was the initial contact for the train project. Uh, the students are, from Graphic Design, Brett Colby and Connor Wolf. Collision Technology, Anthony McDonough, Richard Regan, Jamie Phillips, and Sean Hubble, and Jeremy, Jeremy Martins. Uh, juniors, Maya, those, those first names are seniors. Juniors, Maya, Rosano, and Emma Paul. Sophomores, Michael Squato. Marcus Baptista, Jared McClung, Ryan Texera, and Austin Hoffler. Metal Fabrication, Seniors, Brianne, Barnaby, Cameron Farah, David Marquez Vargas, and Devin Pina. Juniors, Lindsay Bullia and Sean Rady. Design and Visual Communications, students who came up with the color schemes for the project. Antonio Torres, Bailey Long, Brendan Rubert, Haley Tedesco, Henrik Perry, Megan Moynihan, Sam Healy. Bailey Lounge created the design that you mentioned you were going with, which was uh, the uh, snowflakes and calling it the Dighton Express. And so the, after the initial paint job, the decorations that were added to it. So uh, these are the students who, and teachers who worked on that project. And um, at the end of the DVD that Ron did, they are all listed under credits. And, uh, and they're all uh, mentioned there. And uh, as our Sergeant uh, Ed Dutra, who was the person who made contact with the military and found that uh, tow motor, uh, that was surplus property, and Tom Ferry, uh, who brought it back to Dighton and then took it to BP and also picked it up and brought it back to Dighton when it was all finished. So, and the cost for that train uh, came in under budget, uh, came in ahead of time, and uh, the cost was like $657 and change to do that. And then there was some, uh, a small amount of work done in town, um, a, a switch so that, uh, because it has an off and on switch, so you had to have a way to kill it or anyone could push the button and drive it away. Hey. So <laughs> that was taken care of. And uh, the little string of white lights along the top, that was done here. And um, they will be getting the bell off the old train and eventually putting that on. But uh, yeah, it's a very good project. Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, review, discuss, and act 
on the Town Administrative Committee to make recommenda recommendations to this board for their um, due diligence in the search for a, uh, a list of candidates that this board can look at and pick apart and <laughs> research and review and um, have an opinion on their recommendations. So I don't know who's going to speak in, on behalf of the committee, but the podium's all yours. Mm -hmm. Just so like the Army PD. Number. <laughs> yeah. See what happens, Peter, when you look for others? That's right. <laughs> uh, just to begin with, where we were tasked with putting together the uh, job description again of, of our proposed job description for the board, uh, pulling together an ad for the Mass Municipal Association, reviewing the resumes, and then making the recommendations to you, the board. We got the ad in for the October MMA uh, magazine. The resumes were due by the beginning of November. We received 22 resumes, not only from all over Massachusetts, but from all over the country. Uh, the farthest, I believe, was Oregon, if I remember right. Yeah. And out of those, each member of the uh, committee graded the resumes based on the uh, what the requirements were in the ad. The top uh, scoring resumes, they then, we then con conducted phone interviews to pull down the, the last couple that um, we've provided those resumes to you as the recommendations from the committee. How many uh, did you actually have interviews with, phone interviews, do you know? Uh, four, two. We had six scheduled. Six, but two, two, two respond. respond yeah. So we ended up with four. Two over, over the course of roughly three weeks, yeah. just never never responded to inquiries, phone calls, emails. Um, and then the four had, had contact, had phone, <coughs> phone interviews. Um, narrow that down to the two that that we provided to you Rick, did you have any comments or questions I was just curious to know uh, you had four interviews so I guess my first question would be um, was a conscious de decision made amongst the committee to not go with the two lower than the two that didn't show up and my other question um, I guess would be um, why two recommendations and not like three or the four that you ended up interviewing over the phone. I guess it's arbitrary. So I believe just out of the two, or two out of the four, I believe the other two after the phone interview was just determined that they weren't qualified. Okay. Yep. Based on the resumes, they appeared qualified. Based on the <coughs> phone conversations and the interview, it, it, the, the resumes were, were much better than the actual okay. yep. qualifications. Thank you. Nancy? Um, not, not publicly, not here tonight, but um, I would like to know who the six were. Okay. Because I'd, like I'd like to look at the six, um, the total. You know, I do have, I just got the ones that, the two that two. you listed. So I would just I'd like to look. Uh, I'm curious where they came from because I know they were um, <laughs> spread out. <laughs> Montana, I remember Montana and then Utah. Um, only because I remember seeing the, the uh, addresses, but um, but I would like to just look at those. That's all. <coughs> it will provide provide Karen with the other four. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Did anybody else in the committee, you know, wish to make any comments? Or? We made good time. Okay. We were efficient. Well, I, I I was I was gonna you know save that for the last. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a good group. It was a very, very um, diversified group. You know, we thought it was extra excellent selection of the personnel that you know we put the charge on. Uh, what surprised me the most was the expediency of how he got this all done. I mean, it was a, this was a much longer affair when we were involved with it the last time, and we had less people. Um, so. It, from this board, we commend you all for a job well done. We appreciate it very much. Um, and 
I, I just quickly looked at the two. I mean, they're very good choices. Um, I have no qualms with that. Um, but like Nancy said, you know, gladly look at the others. Not, not that we're going to downplay what you have recommended to us, because obviously they'll be, you know, the top two choices that we'll look at. Uh, but uh, from this board, I want to thank you all very much. A job well done. Thank you. And I hope you continue in some other phase. And Read if, that you need list a, again. if you need a list of this, <laughs> I'll gladly give you a copy. If I could just say that this, the, um, it, was, it was a pleasure working with the committee, and the committee did a great job uh, putting a lot of hours in the short amount of time right. and worked very hard to get this mm -hmm. done. Have you ever spoken at that podium before? I have not. Oh, I, I don't want to give you a number. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you again. May I ask one one last question? Sure. Um, when you, when the board, I should say, when the committee came to its final um, recommendation, if you will, on the two individuals that you forwarded to us, was that unanimous? And no names. It was unanimous. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I think everything was. You, you, yeah, you're picking on one. <laughs> Number. No. <laughs> and everything was unanimous. It really These was. are probably going to be questions that, you know, sure. that they've all brought up, both of my colleagues, that uh, we went through the last time, too. Yeah. It's always the, the Monday morning quarterback, you know. <laughs> Did they do this? Did they do that? Did they, you know, this is Dean's friend because he lives on Cape Cod and nobody else does. <laughs> all this stuff, so. I want to know, know if Brett's been picking on his mother. That's what I want. <laughs> I have one thing. No, it's yes, off sir. limits. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, off limits. Limits. No politics in the house. No, off limits. Um, um, just to throw something in, as in my role as the clerk, which was, I learned a lot, got a lot out of it. Uh, it was a good team that we had that came together, believe me. And uh, I really got a lot out of it. But all those uh, folks are documented, which you have, I turned into. Everything has been turned into Karen, which goes to you folks. Mm -hmm. And all those uh, selections, if you, you know, you want to review those other folks, that's all in there. So. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I saw the folder. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, we were all in the end, so. I mean, we worked sure. together, you know, we did have our discussions, but I mean, it, we did come, we did it by the, I don't know if you want to say by the book, but it went by those guidelines that you mm set. -hmm. Any questions that come up, we'd be happy to answer. Sure. I was surprised at the rapid response to the ad and, and the geographical area. I mean, um, one of the least expensive, expensive places to advertise is MMA. And it, it gets out there coast to coast. It's amazing because uh, like we've done in the past with other vacancies, uh, applications come in here and uh, Karen stamps them in. And we'd periodically say, how many we got? And it was like each day it was more and more. Or, uh, where are they coming from? And it, that's how we know that, you know, some of them were out west. And so the area that was covered, for the amount of money you spend for that ad, and when you think of what it costs you to advertise in, in other publications, I'll put it, uh, it's money well spent. And it's inexpensive, I couldn't really. Have 22 people. Oh, yeah. I never would have anticipated that many. And for the most part, targeted yeah. people who are looking for a uh, a municipal type job, mm -hmm. are looking there as opposed to getting mm -hmm. someone who just wants to get a job, a new job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and if you if you see that magazine, uh, that the uh, beacon that comes out from the MMA, I always look at the the want ads because it seems like just about any public position, uh, uh, accounting. Uh, highway superintendent, uh, water commissioner, uh, you know, on and on and on it goes, town engineers. It's, uh, there's just such a, a, a large number that advertise in there. It's, it's really enjoyable to look through some of the resumes, no matter what job is, you know, these people are applying for because you can pick out some of that I'm hoping I'm the only one that submits a resume, you know, like a high school teacher that wants to be a town administrator, you know. <laughs> you know, but it's it's such a vast scope of diversity of, of all those applicants. I mean, never mind, you know, how you're going to commute from Utah and get to work on time, <laughs> but uh, but it's it's from all facets of life, all kinds of jobs that they had. So, um, you people did a great job.
Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we will discuss an act on a status update on Eagle Scout project by Mr. Noah Avila. Good evening, Noah. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. You remember Have you back again. You remember your number? Unfortunately, yeah. I do not. <laughs> we don't either. <laughs> um, here is a copy of basically what I'm going to be discussing tonight for the board and Ms. Brady. Just wanted to start off by thanking the board for allowing me to give you a progress update on my tr my project thus far. Um, just a quick summary of the completion. I believe I am 80% complete. Uh, the last time we met, we jumped significantly forward in progress. Um, so what's been completed pretty much thus far is we have flagged the trail that has since been removed. We have removed the vegetation for the entire duration of the trail. We have put gravel in any areas where rocks were removed or that were prone to just divots because we wanted a nice, safe, flat trailhead. And currently what is in progress is the rock removal, currently 85% complete. The entrance to the actual trail, 80% complete. Wood chip spreading, 20% complete. I'm currently in the process of trying to get more wood chips to finish covering the whole trail, make it look nice and natural. And then kind of for the steps moving forward after the physical part of the trail is complete, um, I want to send out a name survey to propose, um, suggest a name based on the community's kind of insight to whoever the correct person is. Add in trail markers along the trail and then also creating an education program with the students at the high school so that science teachers or students across the district can come visit the trail and learn kind of about our local eco ecological uh, habitat. And then finally, one of the big things is the pictures for the project, updates on the project, and progress counters can be found at my personal website, noahavila.com forward slash drtrail.html. There is definitely over 200 pictures kind of outlining the project from start to where we are today and also to the finish once we get there. But unfortunately, I couldn't print all those out, but they are online. <laughs> Have you started putting your book together? Uh, I gotta get. I have I have all the paperwork, but I just have to kind of file it in the order that I need it. Oh, uh, and one other thing, to get to where we are today, I have to thank all the volunteers. To this point, we have over 545 individual volunteer hours. People just countlessly bringing in their equipment, bringing their tools, weekend after weekend, hour after hour, to kind of help and get us where we are. And then the estimated financial contributions is at $1,500. I'd like to thank the Lions Club and the Dighton Police Association for both providing me with $300 worth of funding, and that kind of kick-started the gravel process and has helped me get to where I am today. That many hours. That many hours. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. <laughs> it certainly is. Have you received uh, donations of materials? I have received one donation of materials. Thank you for mentioning that. We got 10 tons of gravel through forest dense grade donated from J and J materials in Rehoboth. Oh, good. Another big thank you to them. They also gave us a discounted rate for the remaining gravel. So that was quite significant too. So it looks like you're in need of uh, wood chips. Yep. Anybody listening out there? Um, I did contact someone through the town of Rehoboth. So he's working on getting me some wood chips, and then also and someone else I've been working through, this Bristol Aggie, to kind of get some wood chips. Did you check with Tom Ferry to see about wood chips? Because I have not talked to Tom Ferry. Because yet. they do a lot of tripping, and they have a chipper. And I don't know if that's at the landfill or where it is. Yeah, they do it at the transfer station, yeah. Uh, so th there may be some at the transfer station. Thank you. One other person I'd like to thank because I think they've, the people at Bristol Aggie, the students and the teachers from the um, <coughs> the, tree, the arborists, they've been a huge help. They've helped take down any dead, unsafe trees and just pretty much have made the trail safe. I couldn't have done it without them. No, this is a big, uh, big jump since the last time you were here. Yeah. <laughs> huge, huge uh, progress. Uh, and I, I have to, 
my own opinion, not the board's. My opinion is you're on top of this. Thank you. Let your AD and go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Administrator. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? I know. Just happy. Good job. <laughs> so, what are you looking at for a finish timeline? Uh, assuming the weather cooperates. Pretty much, I'm just waiting on the wood chips. So, as soon as I can get the wood chips, I'm estimating two more six-hour workdays, providing we have at least ten volunteers each day. And if we have that, I believe we can finish the rest of the wood chipping. Do you have any names you want to mention? Or do you not want to leave anybody out? Um, I think I got everyone, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people definitely could not get here alone. It's a group project. I know somebody you didn't mention. Oh, yeah, my dad. Wow, that's a bad one. <laughs> 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 I'm going be walking now. Keep <laughs> walking home. <laughs> Yeah, my, trail, right? <laughs> my dad's been pouring out his wallet for water and pizza. You know, I was just going to ask, who's by, six hour days, who's buying all these lunches? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you dad for all the food help and volunteer hours as well. No, keep us abreast, you know, and um, we'll, we'll get some words out, see what we can do to them. Thank you. Thank you. Now next spring, not now, but next spring, we'll we'll walk that trail. Okay. Hope to see you on it. <laughs> <laughs> what would we do in this town without Eagle Scouts? I don't know. I don't know. I noticed that this is sign. Um, the sign has been erected down at the um, west entrance to the uh, Broad Cove Nature Trail. That's it. Yes, I saw it uh, today when I was going to Somerset. Yeah. Nice. I assume the highway department put it up, but it's it's uh, it's there. Yeah. Uh, as we move on on the new business, uh, first on the agenda is review discuss an act on the resignation of Jeff Gagnon, who was a uh, town mechanic in the highway department from the Insurance Advisory Committee. We have a letter addressed to the Board of Selectmen from Jeff Gagnon. Dear Selectmen, by this letter, I respectfully resign from my appointment to the Insurance Advisory Committee for the Town of Dighton. Sincerely, Jeff Gagnon. Um, we, have, we have a a rather lengthy list of, of individuals who are on the Town Insurance Advisory Committee. And most of these people represent some form or some department within the town. And we try to keep every department um, to have a representative to represent, you know, their contract, you know, their insurance needs and what have you. And to have equal input and, and feedback amongst the departments. Uh, in this case, the highway department has always been the steward of the union who has been the uh, representative for the, for the highway. Uh, Jeff has, after a couple of decades of being the union steward, stepped down. And our foreman, Dennis Hazel, is, is now the uh, union steward. So that will be coming up next. And this is the reason why Jeff stepped down and we'll be appointing a new one. So I'll entertain a motion to accept, uh, with the regret, the resignation of Jeff Gagnon to the Insurance Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. And next we'll review, discuss, and act to appoint Dennis Hazel to the Insurance Advisory Committee. And for reasons I just stated, uh, Dennis is a new steward of the uh, highway union local, and he will has accepted the appointment of the insurance advisory committee representative from the highway department. Do I have a motion to accept his appointment? Uh, I make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. 
Again, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. See, ladies and gentlemen, it's very easy to get on a committee. <laughs> Just tell us and it's done. And once you've served on a committee, when your assignment's over, that's when you really want to jump on to the next one. That's right. <laughs> and believe it or not, there's, there's very few openings on, on uh, all of the committees that we have. Um, for your own information, because I have had the uh, opportunity, I guess you call it, of, of being chairman for four and a half out of my almost six years I've been here, um, we appoint in excess of 200 volunteer appointments every single year, over 200. So um, at this time, I don't believe there's more than two or three openings throughout the whole town. Um, we will start beginning the first of the year uh, reading any vacancies that we do have and, and any anyone is more than welcome just to come up to town hall fill out a interest form to to be appointed to whatever committee might interest you mm -hmm. and um, we look forward to that and i i have always commended the people in this town for reaching out to be a part of a committee to help to, to whatever the committee's needs and goals are uh, it, it's tremendous. I hear stories from other selectmen in other towns that they can't, they can't fill committees, they can't get quorums enough or enough people to, to conduct meetings, to, to run town government. This town has no problem. Um, I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times since I got elected. This might be a small town, but the hearts in this town are big. And, and, and you people, that love the community, love the town, you reach out, and this is a good indication of it, just the participation you all do. I hope you all continue, and um, thank you very much. Next on the agenda, review, discuss, and act to appoint the records access officer for public records requests. Boy, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> Our beloved governor has uh, sort of upgraded in, a, in his own manner the uh, records access and the bylaw that, that well, the, the laws of the state of people who request public records. Um, it's gotten a little more confusing. Each, each town and city has to appoint one person who's in charge of it and they have to have a, a backup. Um, I don't have all the information because there's so many terms to, to how any, any resident, any person can request records. There's a timeline that you have to have a PhD to follow to make sure that people get it on That's time. That's not true, I can't follow it. <laughs> if you can, I certainly can. Um, so at this time, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to appoint our town clerk, Susanna Medeiros, to the records access officer. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Happily second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That motion carries unanimously. May I make uh, one comment regarding uh, our RAO, our new RAO in the website. Um, our town clerk, who is also now our RAO, as just appointed, um, ha we have uploaded to the website the new public, uh, public records request form. Um, that will start, you, you can use that form now but that will go into effect, I believe, January 1st. Selectman Goulart is our municipal modernization expert on the board, so she'll correct me if the dates are wrong. Um, I believe the RAO has to respond within 10 days 
Um, and that can be initial response, and then you have, t I believe, 25 days to fully, uh, course, uh, fully fulfill the request uh, from the requester. So that is a new uh, form that we have uploaded to the website under news and announcements, and also a permanent link on the town clerk's uh, subpage on the Dighton website. And, and uh, to add to that, we had a department head meeting today, and Sue was talking about uh, this particular um, requirement uh, of the Modernization Act, the Weed Whacker Bill. Um, a lot of the requests we get relate to uh, minutes for meetings and things like that. Uh, so Sue and uh, Brett will be uh, making sure that all meeting minutes are posted. So that if somebody wants minutes, all they have to do is go to the site. So hopefully that's gonna reduce the number of actual requests that come in for public records. And uh, as much information, public information as possible is going to be uh, online um, so that it'll be information that's not current that will, that will probably be requested if somebody has a concern about a committee meeting two years ago or something like that. But uh, there's a lot to this, and uh, I think probably, um, um, hopefully, a lot of the requests will be go to the website. Here's the website. Go there, and you can read the minutes. And then if what you're looking for is not there, uh, get back to me. But hopefully, that's going to streamline things, too. Except those that want outrageous requests. The high vote, yeah. yeah. <coughs> like seven years worth of uh, That's a lot, yeah. ZBA meetings. Yeah. And you have to make every attempt to fulfill it within a time frame. So uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little rough. A mm -hmm. little bit of a burden. Maybe we should have a committee for that. <laughs> <laughs> we needed a committee before the legislation passed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, next on the agenda, review, discuss, and act to appoint a an assistant records access officer for public records requests. So that person is an A R A O. Arao. Arao. And with that, I would entertain a motion to appoint assistant town clerk Pamela Walla as the Public Records Access Assistant Officer. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. And I'll just uh, make one piece of discussion. The reason for this appointment is because we have an unwritten policy within each office that if there's a, say, a town clerk and an assistant, well, they both can't take vacation at the same time. So at least there's a one there all the time in case a request comes in. Because if Sue happened to be on vacation and wasn't gonna be back for four days, and the other person who might be in another office happens to be on vacation, well, we've just lost four or five days of our time frame that's required to get the, the records to them. So it, it puts you behind the, the eight ball a little. So. We figured uh, this this board that since they both can't be out at the same time, then we won't we won't have any lost time. Um, I have that motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries. May I add one, ex one additional uh, kind of amendment to what I said before? Uh, right now, with our <laughs> old, uh, I don't know, what, ancient website that we're using, um, you will have to print the public records request form from the online uh, link. Then you can fill it out and bring it back. We will eventually work towards being able to fill that form out on the website, submit it through the website, and you will receive uh, a timely response. But that is that is a, a, a goal, <laughs> and not uh, will not happen right now. But we are working towards that, so that will definitely streamline the process as well. 
And last, under the heading of new business, review, discuss, and act to appoint an at large member to the advisory finance committee uh, at that new over the regional. Um, I will entertain a motion by Brett <laughs> um, to appoint Nancy Golot as advisory finance committee member. This is an at-large position, also from the town of Dighton. There are two members of our current finance committee who are part of that board, and that's <coughs> Mr. Robert Rendon and Mr. Kevin Perry. Kevin Perry. So I will entertain that motion. And I will make the motion happily to appoint Selectman Nancy Goulart to the Advisory Finance Committee. And I definitely will step down and second. Sounds like nobody wants this job. <laughs> and I did it before a few years ago. I actually, I was, when I was on the Finance Committee, I was uh, one of the Finance Committee members. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Unanimously. Unanimously. Nancy loves to nominate me for committee. <laughs> this is payback because when we organized the committee, we appointed him personnel uh, officer. <laughs> you remember, I remember that? that. <laughs> he remembers too. I watched it on the uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's payback time. And so I, this is my last term. <laughs> And I asked God for a week, what did I do wrong? <laughs> uh, do we have any reports tonight from my fellow colleagues? None? Okay, we'll go next to acknowledgments. First under acknowledgments is we have an anonymous donation in the amount of $32 to the Council on Aging. And a second anonymous donation, again to the Council on Aging, for $340. So I will have to take the two different uh, donations separately. Mm -hmm. We have a $32 donation and $340. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we acknowledge the donation, uh, anonymous donation of $32 to the Council on Aging. Second, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. And the second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we acknowledge an anonymous donation in the amount of $340 to the Council on Aging. Second. Again, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Has anyone ever not approved one of these? What, what, what would happen? Do, do, does the money get returned to the anonymous donor? We could. I would give it to Alice. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm always kidding, of course. Um, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. It's, uh, it's just part of a requirement <coughs> that gifts to the town have to be accepted by the board. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and we don't, I don't think we've rejected anything unless it, I can't think of anything. <laughs> it's never happened. We won't let it happen, Mrs. Souza, don't worry. Unless it's like 40 acres of contaminated land that they yeah, want to. <laughs> we don't want it. <laughs> we don't want that. Next on the agenda, public input. Anybody like to bring up anything? Have any questions? Comments? I get two brief uh, updates. Uh, from the department head meeting today, um, Mr. Ferry, Highway Superintendent, mentioned that the, uh, con the um, documents relative to the land taking, the easements for that project, uh, have come back to the engineer. He hasn't seen them yet. Uh, this board met with um, the engineer for that project that has been hired by Seneca and uh, Tom Ferry. And we went over the proposal that was submitted and requested that certain changes be made to the document. Uh, those were sent off to uh, 
Delaware, I believe, to AstraZeneca and for their lawyers to look at. So it's back. Um, we'll, we'll be given a copy uh, so that we can review it and see if they've made the changes we want or anything else like that. So uh, that project is moving on. And as far as the Center Street sidewalk project goes, um, I now have three names of appraisers that I will contact and ask them to submit uh, a bid to do the appraisals for the uh, land taking on Center Street. So to the residents of Center Street that are affected by the project, uh, the next step is to contact the appraisers, give them a deadline, give them the opportunity to come in and look at the plans that are here and so that they can submit a proposal and we can um, issue a contract to somebody to look at all of the properties. Um, after that, we will be in touch with property owners and we will discuss the terms, conditions, uh, what um, options are available to property owners uh, for the land taking and easements uh, for this property. Uh, so those are moving along. And, and on the Center Street sidewalk uh, project, um, just a general comment, there was a large tree on the property uh, right near where the old railroad bed was. It's on private, was on private property. Um, it was taken down because of its deteriorating condition and um, so that's also part of this project but that work's been done so that's one obstacle down. Mr. Z? I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> Mom says, you kidding me? <laughs> if there's nothing else, any questions, any input? If none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just one little uh, advice, a little caution. In the mornings, it's getting a little slippery, you know, with the temperature dipping and there's still enough moisture in the air. So be careful of the black ice, drive slow in your early morning commutes and uh, stay safe. Thank you, Cable. Good night, everyone.